the how to stop negative behaviors during the sessions so it's regarding one particular autistic kid who is 6 year old and he gets very uh, he is more attracted towards the so for example if he sees uh, someone saying any negative stuff or you know he sees on videos or on tv anything any character uh, which is hitting someone else uh, so he sort of likes those things so even during the session you know he's a very imaginative kid if you give him he loves free play he can talk uh, if but the main problem is the behaviors because of which you know he cannot mix up with the peers even during the session what he would do is if you give him blocks he would make a, a sword uh he would make a, a cutter and then he would like i'm going to hit you with this you know all sort of that that is even if you have a like you know a puppet so he's going to have a puppet like for example of one character another character and then he will show that this character is hitting this character so it's always about hitting uh, i don't know when i think or i i feel that you know when he was younger and probably when he was not doing the stuff i think the mom must be saying that you know if i you are not going to do this i'm going to scold you or the police uncle is going to come and you know he's going to uh, put you in the jail or he's going to hit you so he keeps repeating that stuff uh, and what he will do is during the session uh, so for example um, he doesn't like uh, so basically i'm doing more of you know i i know what are uh, his activities of interest and i try to use it uh, to work on his behaviors so earlier there was lot of snatching and all uh, now i'm sort of you know made a chart of uh, good behaviors and bad behaviors so he has sort of understood that he has to use words instead of snatching and pulling so he would so he talks in marathi so he'll basically say that i need help or i want to continue playing or at times uh, what happens is uh, suddenly for example if it is done and if i have to tell him that now it's over now it's home time now you have to go uh then suddenly he be like he'll start hitting and i don't know how to react because you know uh, uh and you know then he would be and he knows that he has done something wrong because he'll go out and he'll tell everyone that i hit her uh and she got angry and then she will look at my face so i sort of feel that he likes that reaction uh and i don't know what to do because and even mother's complaint is the same that you know uh, he wants to play with other kids uh but he doesn't know how to you know uh, initiate and interact so he is going to uh, touch the other kid who is going to play and the kids are not comfortable you know they don't know him so they don't like the touch so he's going to touch and he'll continuously keep on saying something then he'll suddenly start hitting someone start snatching and then the uh, kids also don't know what to do and at times it has happened that you know he has not done something and he, there is a blame which is put on him that he did that and you know the mother is also sort of not knowing what to do and we okay. want to work on a group situation like you know peer interaction sort of a thing uh, but you know the behaviors are sort of um, uh, mm -hmm. a hindrance it's really sad because he he does want to make friends he might just not know how to and because you're talking about a lot of the modeling behaviors that he's exhibiting so he is uh, modeling some of the things that he might have heard or perhaps even some of the things that he might have seen on videos um mm. so and and that's a lot of times that is what our kids are doing because it's so difficult for them to in the social world go out and to to um to just copy and imitate people because people are different all the time right so mm. you know i might react and and be not as overly friendly when i see somebody whereas another person might be hi how are you and then so who should he um imitate and that's very mm. difficult for our kids so they go to cartoons and they go to youtube videos and they're like well this person is always the same so i'm going to just mm. react like the bad boy in this cartoon because this this cartoon is always the same um so that's one of the things that i feel like is kind of why our children do these things and why they imitate some of the the models that maybe aren't the best role models um just to go back to what you're saying so that's giving you kind of like a reason to maybe even to tell his mom look this is probably the reason the the fact that he can talk is um is good for us to include some of the other strategies so maybe we can use like do you use a lot of social stories with him yes um okay. the problem is even for the social stories i have to enact using the puppets because 
the moment so he is very fixated with the things which he likes so if you give mm-hmm. him any sort of a free play if you give him clay if you give him blocks he, um, you know all sort of those sort of things he loves doing it but if it is a book the moment he'll see the book and even it's if it's on the table and even if i'll tell him it's not for you i've kept it for mm-hmm. someone else he will not like it he will be like you keep it away okay all right and that's great that you are actually using his interest right because that is the that's the key with all of our kids autistic kids near divergent near typical kids we want to use what they like so if we're using if we're using his interest in those are puppets and you know like role play scenarios or imaginary play with figurines and those kind of things we we can use the figurines that he enjoys most so maybe that's lego whatever it is if we can try and create scenarios where it's a bit more real in his life that would make sense so i'll give an example when we do social stories now which we're not going to use with him but it's the same concept that we're going to use with figurine play right but with social stories um what we'll do is we'll we'll use real life stories so we use the social stories how we learned in theory we take real real life examples of that child and then we also use their face in the story their name in okay. the story and their friends in the stories as well because otherwise it's just another thing it's like well that's not that's not my life that's not me that they're mm. talking about they're teaching me again about something that i really don't care about so that would be the first thing that i would say when you're using your figurine play to even like <laughs> no, this is going to sound a little bit strange but even cut out like a little photo of him and put it on the figurine and then you can reenact the stories focusing on him and his actual friend at school that he wants to make friends with but he's struggling to, with the social interaction when i work okay. with a lot of the social with the, with a lot of my autistic friends that's one thing that they all say is that why didn't you teach us why don't you teach us with actual scenarios and with us as examples because otherwise it doesn't always make sense to us especially when we're still young it's just it's a foreign okay. concept so that would be the first thing and then also to focus on what he should be doing because what you're explaining to me a lot is he's yes he's seeking attention but it's not that he wants to um receive negative attention he really it feels to me like he just wants some attention so why mm-hmm. don't we focus on solely on what he's doing well so that we can show him that those behaviors are awesome so you know we can say okay um when you go and meet your friend you can ask them how are you you can give them high fives you can you can play with your figurines with them that's great they're going to be super proud of you i'm going to be super proud of you you're going to make friends friends are awesome to have you know those kind of things because if we're focusing on good versus bad behavior a lot of the times the kids because they're so used to going for the stuff that's easy which is tearing paper or uh you know slapping you or whatever they're going to gravitate towards the bad behaviors even though they know that's not what you want they're very smart we know this but it's easier because they're more used to it it's kind of like when you were the rebel at school and people would say you know don't don't be mean to the teacher but it's the only thing that you're really good at feels to you like you're really good at it so why not do it again because then at least you've got somewhere where you belong which is like you know I'm the I'm the bad girl or I'm the bad boy or whatever so I think that would be one thing is to focus really on the good stuff and then giving him an outlet um where he is able to engage in some of his um aggression you know like if he wants he needs somewhere where he's able and he's allowed to give that to get that out so um perhaps like i, I know that when we had our q and a our live q and a we spoke about that corner that kicking corner yes. for one of our kids and that might be something for him when he's feeling a bit overwhelmed or angry just to tell him why don't you why don't we create somewhere where you can just go and kick and break stuff like even if it's stuff that he's allowed to break so you're you know if that's okay with the parents obviously we want to make sure that it's all right with the parents but somewhere where he can go and he can get some of his frustrations out he can punch pillows or um boxing boxing bags um and maybe even kick some pillows and so on and he can create that space himself just so that we we show him that it's okay to get angry that's a big thing is to validate that like that anger um okay. that it's all right we all get angry um but you know 
this is where you can get some of your anger out. And if you're angry at me, please tell me. Tell me to stop. You don't want to. You don't want to do this. Can you go do this later? Um, just providing him with those the words that he can use. Try to refrain. This is something personal that grinds me a little bit. Try to refrain when therapists do this by say um, to refrain to saying um, use your words because. Mm -hmm sometimes we don't use our words right like sometimes when i'm really angry i just want to walk away from a situation i don't want to tell a person i am angry with you i'm going to walk away now <laughs> so, so try and maybe say like what do you want to do to get this anger out the options are kicking shouting in that corner where you're allowed to go and shout or going you know like punching that bag what do you want to do let's go do it do you want me to go with you we can punch it together so, so that he can see, okay, you're actually, you're actually in it with him. Um, I think that's a, that's okay. an important thing. Okay. That... And what about, so for example, um, as I've told you, so of course I'll be implement, I'll try to implement as much as I can and I will try to, you know, uh, you know, put it down how, how to implement all these things, which you have discussed. Uh, but my thing is, for example, now if he starts hitting, like for example, if it's home time, Mm. And he knows that now he has to go. But if uh, he is playing with the Legos and he wants to continue playing with the Legos, but I need to take the second kid in, in my therapy room. Yes. And I have to tell him yeah. to leave. And he doesn't like that. And he starts hitting. What to do at that moment? Mm. That's a good question, right? So that happens as well. And I mean, obviously, you um, you want to show him that the transitions are hard because transitions are hard for all kids, but especially for our kids. Um, because sometimes they think, okay, when am I going to have this again? Am I going to have it again? Is it going to be at the same place? Will all the Lego pieces be there? Um, you know, am I going to see, am I going to see uh, Sakina at the same time next week? Like all of these things, right? They, that th these are the things that we want to make sure that our kids are aware of. Um, so the one thing that I would say is like the first thing would be to to make sure that you show him on the transition, that there's a transition coming up in five minutes. Remember in five minutes, the session's going to be done. So you, you kind of, you, you rep, um, reference the visual schedule. So the visual schedule is important to show him, okay, look, you're going to go home at 2.30. Okay. And then you, you, it's not a countdown all the time, but you could just say five more minutes, remember. And then just prep him. I don't know where he is with his language and his comprehension, but prep him that it's okay you're going to see me again next week, Monday, and you can show him on a calendar next week, Monday, you're going to see me again at one thirty. And where would you like me to put the Lego for you so that it's here next week? So okay. that sense of control is really important as well for any child, but autistic kids in general to show them that whatever they want and their interests are always going to be at the same place and you know if they're scared of for example of a sensory input that they should take control of it so that they're not um so that they they just feel more in control right so um i think if you tell him that he can tell you where you can ask him to tell you where to put the lego so that you can have it again monday next week at 1 30. So it's just like instilling that that confidence that you're going to see him again. Hmm. And when, preparing so, him for that yeah. event he, uh, sounds very helpful. I think you're sorry, Sakina, I didn't answer your question there because you asked, him, what do I do when he actually hits me? So that would hmm. be before he hits you to make sure that you prepare him. But I would then say to um, if he does hit you, just remind him, Remember, next week you can have your Lego, but you're going to have to stop this hitting. You can tell me if you're angry or you can go to your corner where you want to, where you can kick a little bit if you're angry, but you have to stop this. Um, so you can be quite firm with the boundaries. I don't believe in ignoring behavior because behavior is for attention. And if they need attention, we need to give them attention. We don't always need to reinforce the negative behavior, but or the seemingly challenging behavior, but we can give him attention and then say, next time this is what you can do because that makes me really proud if you're if you're angry and you go and kick and you get your anger out that's super good because that that helps you they also need to know that it's helping them so i don't i wouldn't really ignore it but i wouldn't um give it too much attention just maybe just redirecting to what is better okay okay sounds very helpful uh the another thing is for the same kid 
now um, if he is very much interested in playing something and as i have told you uh, letting go of that thing and going out of the room is challenge for him so mm-hmm. in that case like for example for any kid who comes to the therapy room i do ask them to help me in winding up uh, and you know keeping the things back and i at times i try to sing a song like you know it's time to put yeah. your toys away with their name uh, so that at least they know that now it's time to go and they have to help me for this particular mm-hmm. kid he would not do that uh, he, he, it's a challenge for him to leave the room if he likes something so in mm-hmm. that case should i uh, like should i force him i know a forcing is not a correct thing which should be done but how to tell him that you know he needs to uh, pack up mm-hmm. uh, and you know wrap up the things before he leaves the room so yeah so like in my previous life i guess i was trained as an aba therapist and they would do a lot of hand over hand uh, prompting and i really didn't like it ever since i got taught how to do it i was like this is not right i still don't believe in it i mean obviously we want to help our kids and if it's something that they they feel com- comfortable and confident with that we can help them for example with the pincer grip then we can help them like hand over hand to show them how to do it i think modeling behavior is always the best to go um with that saying that when he he ne- he needs to learn how to pack up for sure i mean you can't just play with stuff and then leave the room because that, that, that that's not right for any child or any person to do so i would say um lower the expectations a little bit so you can say okay you know what i'm going to pack up five blocks or whatever it is five figurines five legos and you just have to do one and then you can go i'm doing this for you i'm doing this i'm i'm your buddy the worry we're in it together <laughs> um you know you can you can kind of play that um teamwork approach because it really makes a difference if a child sees okay she's not telling me what to do and forcing me what to do and putting her hand on top of me and making me do things she's actually saying we got to do six we got to pack up six things i'll do five you can do one whatever i got your back and then just giving him a high five because that is the that's the type of relationship that we're working towards with our kids um so that they can see okay we're actually wanting them to to learn for their own for their own sake it's not we want to teach them stuff because we wanted them to learn it's really we were trying to help them help themselves um and then and we want them to be as independent as possible obviously that's and happy that's the biggest thing <laughs> yes and it does instill in them that you know uh, they and eventually gradually we can increase uh the number of blocks or yes. things which they have to put in exactly yeah. you've got it yes yeah. yeah so as soon as he sees oh okay sakina's actually she's my buddy she wants to do these things for me and with me and we're like besties you know because then he will he will take more of a keen approach so he'll be more motivated to actually say okay maybe i can do two blocks maybe i can do it with her um because what we're trying to also teach there is and this is what he really wants that it it seems like he really wants to make friends so if he sees oh, okay it's actually not that difficult to become friends with skina so maybe i can try these things with the friends at school or the friends in other therapies or wherever he goes to 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 find peers that is that is a win win situation because your sessions are going to run smoother as a speech therapist and his sessions and his time with his friends are going to also run smoother okay and for the same kid like you know uh, when he is in the therapy room with me or the occupational therapist he attends uh, he goes to a behavior therapist as well so we know how to manage the behaviors what are the things which we are supposed to do and not supposed to do but when mm-hmm. he's out uh you know uh, the mother the mother's major concern is when he's out and you know with other mm-hmm. peers when he wants to make friends uh what should i tell of course i understood what you said that you know figurine play um, mm-hmm. making him understand how to make friends and all uh, but till the time he learns that uh, what should i tell mm-hmm. the mother like should i tell the mother to have him and so at times she has told me that you know uh, the kids are cycling and he when he tries to cycle but then he would just go and you know bump into someone mm-hmm. and then he would hurt someone and then the kids would just run away because they don't know why is he behaving like this yeah. so yeah that's tricky right because you can't be everywhere and the mom can't be everywhere either so um even if so the first thing i would say is that the mom should be um 
taking part of some of your sessions or even like some recordings so that she sees that they're um, the strategies that you're using and the ones that are really good for him can be used with, she can use the same strategies. So the consistency and the generalization is really those two things are such big things and concepts that we need to consider to make um, successful changes for any child. Um, I would say ideally a therapist should be with him at least in the beginning and then fade out. So like an au pair that um, can be can be uh, trained. And then once the au pair is like there with him, she can also fade out and let him play by himself a little bit more. I don't know if that's an option for this family. Um, that That is perhaps something that I would I would say that's first prize is to have somebody there with him to kind of facilitate those peer play situations and social situations and making sure that the generalization from your sessions in school happen at the home environment too. Um, then after that, I would say that if the mom can do some intensive parenting courses or, you know, um, a course perhaps to see why it's important and just some of the strategies that are explained in that too. Um, and then, you know, the, the, I would choose the top three things that you're working with and the strategies that really are working um, and the language that you're using and translate that to her. So to tell her, uh, this is the zones of regulations chart that I have. The, this is my sensory, sensory profile I have for him so that there's some consistency from therapy to the home environment too. Um, I can send I can send some of these things to you so that you can use and maybe you can even translate it in their language too. So that so that yeah, it would be very them. helpful. Okay, great. Yeah, I think it, it really is consistency is key. I know that I say that a lot, but it is. And later on, we can work on we do work on flexibility from the start with our programs. But um, the first thing would be for him to see. Okay, when I hit, my friends leave. And this happens not just in speech therapy, but also at school and also during outings and also when I'm seeing my family members, you know, so there needs to be some kind of um, rule of how you're going to manage the, the different situations. And then everybody is going to have to be doing the same thing, because if, you know, mom does one thing and dad does another thing or whoever is in the family, then the inconsistency is just, it's going to confuse him mainly, mm. which is not great. Um, but it's also going to make it more difficult to help him in the long run. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And one more thing which I wanted to ask you is, now mm. this is regarding AAC. Um, now, okay. um, over here, like, you know, when the kid, uh, of course, if the child has attended some OT sessions and, you know, their sensory issues are being taken care of, and can sit at one place um, for AAC as well, like for any communication, to each any communication skills, we do work on the things which are intrinsically motivating to the child. But mm -hmm. now my thing is, um, for kids who have just started off with therapy, so they have just started off with OT as well, extremely restless kids who cannot, like even for the activities of their interests, they are just jumping from one place to another, extremely restless. Mm -hmm. For such kids, uh, what should I do? Like, you know, at times, uh, then what is done at our center is like we tell them, okay, we give strategies to the mother for modeling and, you know, some uh, language strategies. And we tell the mm -hmm. mother that, you know, let's do one month of only OT. And then we'll start mm -hmm. uh, with the speech sessions. Currently, I'm seeing a kid who has a lot of, um, uh, he's a sensory seeker. Mm -hmm. Even like, you know, uh, keeps on biting and licking all the objects. Uh, just started with therapy. He's a four-year-old boy. So, mm -hmm. and has a lot of feeding difficulties as well. So I thought that, you know, at least uh, if not the communication part, at least let's mm -hmm. start with the uh, feeding thing. So I'm doing mm -hmm. that. But I want to ask you that, you know, how to implement, because even for a speed generating device, like I can't keep on, uh, you know, jumping with the child, like, you know, moving with the child mm -hmm. from one place to another if he doesn't sit at one place. Even mm -hmm. if it's in a, so I've tried therapy, I've tried the ball, I've tried uh, to see that, you know, if the child jumps for some time, gets a movement break, and then can mm -hmm. sit for some time with the activities of his choice, or mm -hmm. at least I can model. So I want to ask you, how should I, even for the gestures, you need some sort of, you know, even 
some time where mm-hmm. uh, a kid sits and you know attends to it so how should yeah. i uh, approach this yeah that's also it's a really good question right and it's a difficult one because um i obviously don't know a lot about this child but what i do know is a lot of our young kids struggle with the uh, what aba therapist used to be calling a pl- compliance i really dislike that word i don't think anyone should be compliant but um sitting at a desk for a little bit or sitting at least on even on a yoga ball for a bit to be able to sustain that attention is very difficult for some of our young kids and also for some of our older kids but um i would say this child in particular sounds like um his sensory system is in overdrive and i would say that is the most important thing because he's got he or she sorry he he he's got issues with feeding so that's also possibly a sensory issue that he has uh so i would i would really just focus all my attention at this point to creating to create a really good sensory diet for him so a sensory profile and then creating a diet and which might change by the way this is an important thing is like it might change from the morning to the afternoon to night and also might be cyclical so it might be like his sensory system needs a lot of input and deep pressure input in the mornings and then and at night time it's a lot more soft touch um it also might change according to where he is at on in the month um so it really depends on the, the, the occupational pediatric occupational therapy therapist would need to do quite a good sensory profile for him um and then everybody should focus just on a lot of sensory input throughout the day continuously i think that yes communication is very important obviously it's the most important thing how we translate what we need that's the that's the one way of how to, how we can translate what we need and require um but for now we can give him gestures to possibly do and later on when he is able to sit for longer periods of time whether it is standing he doesn't need to sit right but let's say if, if his mm. attention is longer his sustained attention is a bit longer then we can focus on an AAC device because an AAC device is cumbersome you can't just like run around with a you know with an iPad or whatever on a trampoline and it's like ah oh, it's say bounce 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 but what you can say is you can go show me up um you know and he can show you up 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 and then you can bounce some more um because it's it's possibly a combination of his sensory system being overwhelmed but also he isn't at the stage where he's able to build that rapport because of his sustained attention is so short right so it's like a it's not a it sounds like a catch 22 but it's really not we just have to start in in brackets so the first bracket for me would be a a hyper focus on a sensory input and what a sensory body or a sensory system needs giving that to him really really focusing on like the whole day providing him with the sensory um, input that he needs and then slowly the second phase or bracket would be then to introducing asking him to require this sensory input so if you've given him so much um i don't know jumps on the trampoline and helping him to go to the trampoline and going up and throwing him up in the air safely and you know doing all these nice things then now you're going to say show me up 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 or you can pair it from the start already with the sound up 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 and you chain it the sounds together up 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 so you're chaining and and uh you're doing that pairing all the time and now you're just requiring him to go up up or up up or or the gesture so you're pairing the sound and the gesture and then seeing what is he what is he leaning towards what is he more what is easier for him to produce the gesture or the sound and then after that i would be focusing a lot more on okay now we're going to focus more on his communicative intent because now because he knows that this is a really fun exercise and i'm pairing it with the sound or the word of the sound or the gesture sorry um and you ch- you're seeing which one he chooses more frequently then you can say okay now you got to say ah 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 and then we can go up 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 so it starts with pairing and then it becomes um requesting 
that that's okay. what I would do more now because if you're going to force him to sit at a table or just forcing him to sit even on a yoga ball or whatever his sensory system is going to um because it's an it's an overdrive and it's overwhelmed he's going to be and I'm not saying stimming is bad but he's going to be stimming a lot I'm thinking so it might be that he's he'll be sitting but he'll be looking around he'll be touching stuff because He's not getting that input that his body that his body craves now. It will um, most probably it will subdue. So it will be it will become less and less the more input he gets because now you're giving him that the, the what he craves. So his body is learning how to adapt to to the amount of input now again. I don't know if that makes sense. Yes. Yes. definitely because most of the times i i i don't know whether to withhold the therapy till that time or should mm-hmm. i be so i try to focus i'm currently also focusing more on oral sensory issues but i also want to work on communication but that has sort of taken mm-hmm. a back seat even i'm trying to do basic gestures with him but you know mm-hmm. just i wanted to have someone validate what i'm doing mm-hmm. you know yes, whether whether i'm going on a correct path or not for you to even just ask all these questions and you know to go above and beyond and sitting in with our cute live q and a's and just like going and asking all these questions about your clients it means so much it means that you're really there for the right reasons working with your clients so that's awesome so you know i'm really 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 impressed